This is Smart Pizza, and in today's hour-long episode, I'll tell you about the most dangerous, cunning, and creepiest reptiles that inhabit our planet. A turtle that can bite a human's arm off, a snake with a spider's tail, the most dangerous crocodile terrorizing an entire country, and dragons living these days. This and much more is in this episode. Let's go! Deadly Cayman – The Black Cadliest Predators in South America These crocodiles are responsible for more attacks on humans than bull sharks, anacondas, or even jaguars. Black caimans are not the largest of all their relatives, but they're not small. Some individuals grow 10 to 13 feet in length. For example, let's take a case study published in the Journal of Wildlife and Ecology in 2011. The study shows that the injuries black caimans inflict have the same clinical profiles as that of sharks due to potentially large wounds, blood loss, and secondary bacterial infections. These cunning, ferocious predators are able to approach their prey as inconspicuously as possible using their camouflage and silent movement skills. Rattlesnakes of South America Rattlesnakes are some of the most dangerous reptiles. These vipers can reach a length of 4.9 feet. They are known for their distinctive stripes on their skin. The snake boasts nine subspecies that live specifically in rainforests. All species look quite similar except for the stripes on the body, the only feature by which they can be distinguished. Usually, they are hard to spot unless they make their presence known, so they don't bite unless provoked. And when they do, the snake twists and hisses to warn the enemy. But if provoked for a long time, it will certainly attack and the consequences will not be the best. Hearing problems, paralysis, blindness, or even death. So if you manage to visit the Amazon jungle and see this predator, feel free to pretend that you have not seen it. False Horned Viper This snake can rightly be considered one of the most interesting finds of the last decades. It was described relatively recently, in 2006, by a group of researchers in the mountainous regions of western Iran. When scientists first encountered this beauty, they were surprised as there was a moving spider on the tip of the tail of an unknown snake. The first thing they thought was a real spider clinging to the tail of the viper. But after a closer look, they realized that this was part of its tail. Scientists speculated that nature had given the viper such an ingenious device as a trap for birds. The unsuspecting bird, having noticed the appetizing moving spider from a distance, approaches the viper in order to take the bait and falls right into the predator's trap. It's unclear how nature managed to create such a unique animal, but it's a fact that a part of the snake mimics a spider very successfully. Moreover, the entire upper part of the snake's body is covered with very rough, rigid scales resembling pieces of stone. But its main difference is its arthropod-shaped tail surrounded by pseudo-paws. And the paws are softer than the rest of the snake's body. And when the snake freezes during the hunt, its tail begins to rotate chaotically, imitating the movement of a spider. Turns out very, very natural. The rest is a mere formality. Komodo Dragon For centuries, there have been legends about dragons around the world, but strangely enough, dragons do exist. Surprised? In fact, they do not exist in the way you've already imagined. However, these monsters from Indonesia are quite fit for dragons. They're so-called Komodo Dragons. These dragons are the largest lizards in the world. The reptile can weigh more than 160 kilograms and have a body length of over 3 meters. With such a size, predatory Komodo dragons eat whoever and whatever they want. They're at the top of the food chain. They can snack on insects or small fish one day and go after wild boar and deer the next day. Here it was a deer that was hunted by two Komodo dragons. The poor guy didn't immediately realize that the lizards wanted to eat it and stayed in place for too long. This costed its life. The Komodo dragons neutralized it and gradually began to eat the prey. Komodo dragons are not snakes and cannot swallow a deer whole, but they can easily swallow something smaller in one fell swoop, for example, a monkey. This lizard attacked a primate, strangled it and wore it out, and then ate it in literally seconds. Komodo dragons were unknown to Western scientists until 1910. Their name came from rumors of a large, dragon-like lizard terrorizing the Indonesian islands. The creatures, new to Europeans, surprised scientists. The owners of a stocky and squat body with a flattened head and rather short and widely spaced limbs appeared before them. Their tongues are yellow and bifurcated, 
which is quite consistent with their draconian name. It's precisely how they help them search for potential prey. They use this organ to taste the air, and then they stick the two tips of their tongues into the palate of their mouths. Chemical smell analyzers recognize molecules present in the air. For example, if the concentration on the left side of the tip of the tongue is higher than on the right, the Komodo dragon already knows that prey is approaching from the left. They eat every last bit of it, including hooves, horns, skin, and bones. Quite often, livestock, cats and dogs have come to the reservoirs to drink or accidentally met on the way of these dangerous lizards get into the teeth of adult Komodo dragons. It so happened that the Komodo dragon also attacked people, times it ended badly. They attack from ambush. They have small but very dangerous venomous glands. The Komodo dragon's bite is much weaker than that of the crocodile, but their victim soon dies from blood loss caused by the powerful venom that prevents blood clotting. Parenty The parenty, like the Komodo dragon, is capable of surprising with its size. Some individuals of this species reach up to 2.5 meters in length. The parenty inhabits arid regions of Australia and feeds on other reptiles, small mammals, insects, birds, and their eggs and carrion. The largest of parentees prey on young kangaroos and solitary dingoes. The parentee is one of the fastest and toughest lizards. If necessary, an adult can reach speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour. The parentee can run on either four or two hind legs. Asian Water Monitor the habitat of the Asian water monitor covers a large part of Southeast Asia and part of South Asia. It's a semi-aquatic animal that spends most of its time in water. The Asian water monitor is good at swimming and diving. These reptiles can eat anything they can catch. The list includes all kinds of mammals, for example, rodents, small deer, or monkeys. They also eat mollusks, frogs, turtles, lizards, baby crocodiles, and birds. In the absence of live prey, they eat carrion. Sensing danger, the Asian water monitor can also be dangerous to humans. Injuries caused by these lizards, according to some reports, have caused human deaths. Caimans, snakes, and monitor lizards are formidable representatives of the reptile class. When it comes to the most dangerous reptiles, few people imagine a turtle because we're used to thinking of a turtle as a slow and clumsy creature. But it's not so. Some turtles not only can easily bite a watermelon or a pineapple or two, but they can also easily bite through a human's hand. Let's see what they do. Watermelon I don't think you've ever seen anything like it. Here, the alligator snapping turtle is literally smashing the watermelon with its jaws. Look, just one clench and the crust breaks easily. That's really powerful. I can see why this man gives the turtle this watermelon on a stick. Just imagine what could happen to his hand. Corn And here, they decided to treat the turtle with corn. Would it appreciate it? First, the man teases the reptile. Of course, the turtle is already in a fighting position. Its mouth is wide open. Then the man lifts it up, and in a couple of seconds, the corn is just as broken. Pineapple The next treat is an exotic fruit. Look how sharply the turtle bit off an impressive portion of the pineapple. Now, let's remember that it's a pretty tough fruit. All in all, the turtle squeezed the juice very well. Alligator Snapping Turtle the alligator snapping turtle you just saw is a species of turtle living in rivers, ponds, and canals in the southeastern United States. Mainly, it lives in the Mississippi Basin. We'll only look at it through a screen, but maybe that's for the best. The alligator snapping turtle is similar in appearance to the common snapping turtle. I'll talk about it later. The alligator snapping turtle received its name because of the extremely powerful jaw and protrusions on the carapace, which resemble a rough, ribbed skin of an alligator. It's just as aggressive. In fact, even its weight is impressive. The weight of an adult can reach up to 60 kilograms. In general, if this is the first time you see this turtle in person, you may be left under a strong impression. Because we're used to thinking that turtles are slow, cute, and even very harmless. But this creature looks more like some kind of dinosaur that somehow survived to this day. And again, let's get back to the main question. What do these beauties eat? In addition to watermelons, corn, and pineapples, which alligator snapping turtles eat in no time, they also eat fish. They have an interesting way of hunting. These reptiles have a worm-like appendage on the tip of their bright pink tongue. This is how the alligator snapping turtle lures its prey. It camouflages itself in the algae or half burrows in the silt and opens its mouth wide. 
Next, the alligator snapping turtle lies motionless in an ambush and baits its prey. When the prey approaches the so-called worm, the turtle's mouth instantly closes. As a rule, this kind of bait attracts fish, invertebrates, and amphibians. It happens that snakes and other turtles are also caught on this hook. Common Snapping Turtle With its powerful and strong jaw, the common snapping turtle can easily bite into small bones, including human bones. I wouldn't want to experience its fierce temper. These turtles are quite formidable and terrifying even in their appearance. The huge head with bulging eyes, large mouth, and sharp jaws and powerful clawed paws inspire real fear. The average length of the shell of the common snapping turtle is up to 35 centimeters and weight is up to 14 kilograms. But sometimes it's more. The common snapping turtle is common in southeastern Canada and the United States. It lives in a wide variety of bodies of water, rivers, ponds, lakes. The main thing is the bottom to be muddy enough so the turtle can easily burrow into it. It feeds on live and dead fish, small animals up to waterfowl, carrion, and aquatic vegetation. Leatherback Sea Turtle The leatherback sea turtle, or the loot turtle, is a unique creature of nature. First, it's one of the largest reptiles in the world, and second, it's the largest turtle on the planet. The largest measured individual had a total body length of 2.6 meters, a four-flipper span of 2.5 meters, and a weight of 916 kilograms. That's just an incredible size for a turtle. The leatherback sea turtle is so-called for obvious reasons. It can easily be differentiated from other modern sea turtles by its lack of a bony shell. Instead, its carapace is covered by oily flesh and flexible, leather-like skin. The turtle's limbs are perfectly adapted to its underwater lifestyle. Among modern turtle species, its fins are the largest in relation to the overall body proportions. Leatherback sea turtles are good divers and are also considered one of the fastest reptiles. Leatherback sea turtles can swim at speeds of up to 35 kilometers per hour. Leatherback sea turtles eat jellyfish, crustaceans, as well as some algae. The reptile's habitat is very large. They live in all oceans except for the polar regions. Although these creatures seem quite gentle, it's better not to disturb them. Otherwise, they can bite so hard that they break bones. Such a monster is definitely not to be messed with. Mata Mata the Mata Mata is the owner of a bizarre and peculiar appearance. It's difficult to confuse it with other species. Its long horn, which adorns the end of its snout, is a sight to behold. It's found in South America, in the basins of the Orinoco and Amazon rivers. This large turtle can reach 40 centimeters in length, and its weight can be up to 15 kilograms. It's also a true queen of camouflage. The original shape of the head with peculiar leathery tubercles on the sides and impressively long neck with rows of skin outgrowths are an excellent camouflage for the animal in its natural habitat. The Mata Mata spends most of its life in the water. It can be found only in bodies of standing water, ponds, lakes with muddy bottoms, or slow rivers. The Mata Mata must camouflage itself if it wants to have a good meal. Its swimming speed is slow, so it has to sit frozen in one pose and wait for a curious fish or frogs to swim closer. At the right moment, the Mata Mata opens its mouth wide and sharply draws in the water together with the victim. Thus, the prey is swallowed whole, the mouth slams shut, and the water inside is released back through the slightly open mouth. The alligator snapping turtle has a powerful jaw, but a relatively small mouth. Although it's capable of biting through large fruits, it will not be able to swallow them at once. But it can be done by the following animals from this compilation which can eat a prey twice as big as they are. Let's take a look at them. What's the first creature that comes to mind when we talk about animals that can eat someone twice their size? A snake, of course. These world-famous reptiles are unique creatures. Even the biggest and heaviest of them look slim because it's hard to seem fat when your body's oblong. The more surprising is that a snake can easily swallow not only a small rodent or lizard, but also a hyena, or even a whole crocodile. And this 13-foot-long python nibbled away at a hyena. It's not a crocodile, of course, but even for such a long snake, a hyena is a very large and difficult prey. But the python coped with it. The reptile immobilized the predator, prepared its mouth, and began to slide down the hyena, swallowing it whole. Snakes are capable of eating animals twice or three times their size thanks to their jaws. The jaws of snakes are connected by very flexible ligaments, so the reptile can open its mouth very wide and gently swallow an animal. 
After such an abundant meal, the snake can forget about food for several weeks or even months. Black Swallower Everyone knows about the gluttony of snakes, but far fewer people know about such a creature as the Black Swallower. By the way, it can compete in terms of appetite even with the huge pythons. Black swallowers are fish that live at a fairly large depth of 492 to 13,120 feet. They're small in length, at most they grow to 10 inches, but this doesn't prevent them from eating marine creatures, which exceed their own length twice and exceed their mass 10 times. Unfortunately, due to the habitat of the black swallower, it's almost impossible to film the process of such hunting. But history knows one interesting case. When in 2007, a 7.4-inch black swallower was found near Grand Cayman. In the stomach of this individual was a snake mackerel. The fish was 34 inches long. It seems unnatural and unrealistic, but the explanation is quite simple. Nature has given the black swallower an incredibly flexible stomach, so the fish can eat real giants without damaging its health. Piranha the piranha is a true legend of South America. These fish living in the Amazon River are famous for their incredible cruelty and powerful teeth. It's said that piranhas can even eat a man. Of course, this isn't true. Throughout history, piranhas have never killed a single human, let alone eating some distracted tourist. But they gorge on smaller prey with gusto. These fishermen decided to conduct an experiment and placed a whole chicken carcass in the Amazon River. Soon, the piranhas came to the chicken. They instantly devoured the chicken. In just a few seconds, all that was left of the chicken was a skeleton. And here's a one-on-one -on -one situation. The piranha notices the sea snake, takes one bite out of the poor thing in one fell swoop and eats it instantly. Yeah, the snake wasn't very big, but in schools, piranhas can eat larger animals, large birds, large fish, and even a whole cow, all thanks to their incredibly sharp teeth. Take a look at these teeth in action. Piranhas can't eat a human, but a giant python or an anaconda can. It would seem impossible to survive such a thing, but the next protagonist of this episode proves the opposite. It all started when a man named Richard Harris decided to make some extra money. He was interested in an advertisement he found in the newspaper. It said that a large reward will be given for the capture of a large anaconda. However, Richard didn't pay attention to the fact that the statute of limitations of the offer had long expired. In any case, he decided to go to South America to find the very large snake. Before the trip, Richard studied blogs about snakes, learned a lot about the habits of snakes and so on. After gathering information and taking his boat and other things with him, Richard set off for South America. He began his search for the snake while in a boat in the river. At first, the journey went well, but suddenly one of the oars broke, injuring Richard's finger. At the same time, some river creatures started pushing and shoving his boat, eventually flipping it over. Richard nearly drowned, but still somehow made it out of the river to shore. Exhausted, he didn't know what to do next, but then out of nowhere, the very large anaconda appeared. The snake began to attack the potential victim, and then Richard decided to take the advice he had read on the blog and pretended to be dead. It only got worse because the anaconda began to swallow him. The man had had a knife, which he had lost in the water while trying to swim. He might have been able to do something, but without a weapon, it was almost impossible to resist. The anaconda was much stronger, and soon Richard lost consciousness from lack of air and intense pressure. By the time, he was already inside the snake. After a while, Richard woke up, lying on the ground. Trying to understand what had happened, how he'd gotten to this place, why he was alive and where the anaconda had gone, he looked around the area. There were traces of hair and skin and some remains all around. After assessing his surroundings, Richard realized that it all resembled the marks of a jaguar. It was the predator that had killed the anaconda, taking some of the snake with it as prey. Richard was incredibly lucky that the jaguar hadn't touched him and that the animal had butchered the anaconda so skillfully, saving him. Stunned by what had happened, Richard tried to get away as quickly as possible to where he would be safe. Miraculously, he got out of the dangerous place and made it home. Some of you may have doubts about the ability of an anaconda to eat a human being. However, we can be 100% sure of the other reptile's ability to devour humans. Next, I'll show you the most dangerous crocodiles in the world. Crocodiles live in many places around the world, including India, 
Here, for example, lives the gavial. Although it looks creepy, it's surprisingly safe for humans. But its neighbor, the mugger crocodile, is an entirely different case. It's one of the three most dangerous crocodile species alive today. The marsh crocodile, also known as the mugger, lives in rivers, lakes, and marshes. The reptile also moves well on land, migrating considerable distances in search of suitable habitat. But it's the water that's considered the element of the mugger. There, the crocodile makes sharp lunges and turns and bites its prey big time. In this, it's helped by incredible teeth which are up to two inches long, as well as a fierce jaw strength. With such a set and impressive size, the mugger crocodile easily deals with monitor lizards, turtles, monkeys, dogs, and otters. It also forcibly takes food from other predators, such as leopards. The Nile Crocodile The African relative of the mugger, the Nile crocodile, is probably the most famous crocodile on the planet. But many people believe that it's also the largest and most dangerous crocodile in the world. But this isn't true. A little later you'll see that. And yet, the Nile crocodile is not small at all. It grows up to 18 feet long and weighs about 1,650 pounds. Due to their size, Nile crocodiles hardly know their equal. Yeah, of course, they can be pastured by their equally dangerous neighbors, hippos, but these giants rarely fight each other to the death. But many other African inhabitants have to be on their guard. Nile crocodiles act decisively and swiftly. The agile predator uses sensitive receptors to detect prey and great force to capture it. Once a creature finds itself in the mouth of the Nile crocodile, it cannot escape unscathed. At a minimum, it can get away with injuries, and at a maximum, the Nile crocodile completely subdues its prey. By the way, among the Nile crocodiles, there are whole legendary characters. One of them is living in Africa right now and holds the whole country and its inhabitants at bay. You'll find out about him soon enough. But for now, let's take a look at the leader. There it is. The saltwater crocodile is a full-fledged leader, not only in the crocodile family but also among all terrestrial predators. It's this monster with rough scaly skin and razor-sharp teeth that is the largest terrestrial predator on the planet. Not some bear, giant snake, or lion, but this reptile. The saltwater crocodile lives in Southeast Asia as well as Northern Australia. Anyone living in these parts of the world should be vigilant. After all, saltwater crocodiles can grow up to 20 feet long and weigh over a ton. Willy-nilly, such a giant has to be reckoned with. In addition, the crocodile is not picky about food. It can attack anyone, and then the opponent will feel even worse than after the encountering with the Nile or marsh crocodile. The bite force of the saltwater crocodile is the greatest among all animals in the world. Compared to them, the bite of even the great white shark can be called a gentle bite. It's not surprising that these giants are even specially caught. Periodically, the authorities of Southeast Asia and Australia arrange the whole operations on capturing especially dangerous reptiles. For example, in 1984, a huge saltwater crocodile was caught in Australia and named after Muhammad Ali. In case you were wondering, at birth the boxing legend was named Cassius Clay. Cassius the crocodile is recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest crocodile in captivity. His length is 17.9 feet and he weighs almost a ton. And this isn't the limit, because crocodiles can grow up to 23 feet in length and weigh up to a couple of tons. By the way, Cassius is also at an advanced age. He's considered the oldest crocodile kept in captivity. It's known for sure that he's more than 110 years old. It's unknown what he was up to in his youth. But the fact that he was caught is a good thing. After all, who knows what he might have done in the wild in his old age. Brutus But Brutus was never caught. This saltwater crocodile is considered the most dangerous of all living reptiles of its species. The 18-foot-long monster lives in Adelaide River in Australia. If you happen to be in Australia, I advise you not to swim in this river. If Brutus is near, the swim might be your last. After all, Brutus is a ruthless warrior, as his appearance indicates. He's missing a front limb. It's believed that he lost it in a fight with one of the sharks, which he eventually defeated. Only other local saltwater crocodiles dare to fight such a monster. For example, the 20-foot Dominator. He's younger than Brutus. Experts think that after Brutus dies, Dominator will become the real king of the Adelaide River, but for now, the young monster has to put up with the fact that the river is under the control of the three-legged giant. He, by the way, although very dangerous, doesn't mind sometimes amusing tourists. 
periodically, Brutus comes to tourist boats, jumps out of the water, and hopes for a piece of free meat. <laughs> but not all saltwater crocodiles behave this way. For example, Lo Long. If he ever swam up to people, he did so with one goal in mind – to destroy them. It's a Philippine monster that's held entire regions of the countries at bay for years. This giant, which is 20 feet long and weighs 2,370 pounds, was incredibly aggressive. He attacked every animal he saw. Mostly he killed buffaloes, which population in the Philippines even declined during the giant's lifetime. But more frighteningly, Lo Long attacked humans as well. At some point, everyone was fed up with it, and the Philippine authorities staged an operation to catch the most dangerous crocodile in the world. The best hunters were hired, and dozens of volunteers took part in the operation. Lo Long was hunted for weeks, and when he was hunted, it took a whole night to subdue the monster. But even this didn't help. Lo Long, upon regaining consciousness, began to twitch and tear the ropes designed for a force of 12 tons. The footage of Lo Long's escape attempt is particularly gruesome. It's hard to imagine how the people around him felt at that time. But luckily, they still secured the killer, after which they transported him to an aviary where he died in 2013. But even the reckless Lo Long is not as dangerous as Gustav. He's not a saltwater crocodile, as one might think, but a Nile crocodile. He's the one that can now safely be called the most dangerous on the entire planet. Yes, right now. Because unlike Lo Long, Gustav is alive and still terrifies the people of Africa. To be more precise, he's not terrorizing the whole of Africa, but only Burundi. Although the word only is not very appropriate here. Just imagine the whole population is afraid of one particular crocodile. Almost all the locals know about him and shake in fear. Gustav is so creepy that his status is close to mythical. He's something like the Kraken, only unlike that mollusk, Gustav is 100% real. He devours not only animals but people as well. Rumor has it that between 300 and 500 people have fallen prey to him over the past few decades, although these statistics are most likely understated. According to hunters, Gustav can be easily distinguished by the numerous bullet scars on his body. Although Gustav has been shot frequently, no one has ever pierced his thick armor. The Burundian authorities try to overpower Gustav but to no avail. It seems that it would take an entire army to destroy such a crocodile. Gustav is a fitting crocodile for the title of the most dangerous in the world at the moment, but he can by no means be called the most dangerous in history. Then who can? Sarcosuchus is a good candidate. This is an extinct genus of giant crocodiles that were much larger than both the saltwater and the Nile crocodiles. They were up to 40 feet long and weighed about 8 tons. They were around 120 to 93 million years ago. Yes, yes, during the reign of fearsome and dangerous dinosaurs. Actually, dinosaurs themselves had a hard time at the time as Sarcosuchus hunted on them. However, Sarcosuchus hunted only on small individuals, but still. The elongated snout allowed Sarcosuchus to make a sharp throw, and its powerful jaws could grind even large bones. Sarcosuchus hunted not only small dinosaurs, but also aquatic animals. But still, the main contender for the title of the most dangerous crocodile of all time is unquestionably Dinosuchus. It's another genus of prehistoric crocodile that lived 80 to 73 million years ago. Dinosuchus reached about 40 feet in length and weighed more than 8.5 tons. How you like a crocodile weighing more than modern elephants and as long as a four-story building? Fortunately, these monsters are long since extinct, but they did stir the pot in their time. Sarcosuchus only hunted on small dinosaurs, while Dinosuchus even hunted on the large lizards, ancestors of the T-Rex, sauropods, and ceratopsia. Dinosuchus didn't matter which creatures to hunt on because these crocodiles had monstrous teeth and phenomenal jaws in their arsenal. Dinosuchus grinded the bones of huge dinosaurs and large fish, snapped giant turtles like peanuts, and generally reigned supreme. For all other creatures, feared and respected them. Crocodiles ate dinosaurs, turtles, sharks, and other fish. But some reptiles are even cooler. Snakes, for example, can swallow not only a human but also an electric blanket or even an automatic rifle. And one turtle prefers a handful of coins instead of fruit. This and more is further in this episode. So we've figured out that a snake can eat a person, but what else is its appetite enough for? What about a blanket? 
and not just any blanket, but an electric one. You think that's crazy? But Karl Beznoska would disagree with you. A few years ago, his exotic pet, a huge Burmese python named Houdini, gobbled up an electric blanket with heating that was in its enclosure. Carl had put it there so the python wouldn't freeze at night. While Carl slept, Houdini ate the blanket. Experts later estimated that it took about six hours for the four-meter-long snake to swallow the blanket, along with the wires and remote control. Miraculously, did the snake unplug the wire and thus save itself from a discharge that would have killed it. After discovering the blanket was missing, Carl realized what was going on and took Houdini to surgery. The vets performed an operation for two hours, during which the snake was incised at about 45 centimeters. Fortunately, everything ended well. The blanket was removed and the omnivorous python quickly recovered. Not surprisingly, the snake was named after Houdini. The python performed a vanishing magic trick just like the legendary illusionist did. A man, check. A blanket, check. What else do snakes eat? Well, for example, tongs. The story took place in 2015. Australian Aaron Rose, owner of a pet python named Winston, wanted to feed his pet a rat by holding it with barbecue tongs. Suddenly, Winston's grip on the tongs seized up and he wouldn't let go. Rose decided to leave it alone for a while, but when he returned, the tongs had disappeared. The python had swallowed them. Aaron immediately took the pet to the University of Adelaide, famous for its pet rescue center. According to Oliver Funnel, the university veterinarian, at first, he didn't believe that the small python had swallowed the tongs whole, but just looking at the snake made it obvious. Winston's body had literally taken the form of a foreign body. Although snakes are great at belching out objects, Winston clearly had no intention of doing so. Perhaps the sharp edges of the tongs were irritating its esophagus and preventing its muscles from contracting properly. At first, the medical team was going to remove the tongs using endoscopy, but eventually, fearing internal damage, removed them during a surgery. Surgery was successful, and Aaron promised to be more attentive to his pet in the future. Snake and AK-47 Some time ago, a photo of a snake swallowing an automatic rifle went viral all over the internet. Is this really possible? Snakes can swallow weapons completely and no one's noticed this before? There are definitely more questions than answers in this case. There are known cases when snakes swallowed their congeners or other animals that were significantly larger than their own size. However, after the publication of such a photo in the internet, people were divided in their opinions. Some people began to write that it was true, while others raised various questions doubting the reality of the case. In addition, some experts in image processing, having analyzed the photo of interest, spoke out not in favor of the plausibility. They believe that although snakes, as a rule, swallow objects much larger than they are, nevertheless the photos of snakes swallowing AK-47 look unreal. Experts also noted that such strange pictures are most probably used for entertainment purposes and meant to attract everyone's attention. By the way, some users even pointed out that snake in the photo doesn't look like a real one and looks more like a plastic one. Coins. Let's move on to another reptile, a turtle named Bank from Thailand. Have you figured out why they call it that? That's right, it was famous for eating coins. And I'm not talking about a couple coins or even a couple dozen coins. A few years ago, 915 coins were extracted from the stomach of this 25-year-old female turtle. That's almost five kilograms of metal. It's hard to imagine how the reptile managed to swallow that many coins, and even harder to imagine how it felt carrying such a heavy load inside. The vets who performed the surgery said that it was the first such case in their practice. Fortunately, Bank was saved, all the coins were removed, and the turtle was returned to the zoo. It was there that it swallowed the coins. And the reason simple. Many tourists, following the belief to throw coins into tanks with turtles to return to Thailand, and locals throw money to these animals hoping for longevity. The turtles don't understand that the coins can't be eaten and swallow them. Unfortunately, in the case of Bank, everything ended badly. Although the reptile was saved, it soon got worse and died from complications. Every animal has its own food preferences, but let's get back to snakes. They have much more sophisticated tastes. Let's take a closer look at their diets and also look at snakes devouring themselves. 
The Diet of Snakes Snakes! The way they move, their unusual jaw structure, their sharpest fangs, the large number of spinal bones – from 200 to 450 – absolutely everything about them is amazing. I think I will not be wrong if I say that snakes are also some of the most dangerous and deadly animals. What creatures can become the prey of a snake? Toads, insects, lizards, small rodents, birds. Snakes usually swallow their prey whole. Moreover, they're also capable of eating their own kind. Yeah, we've heard many times that animals can be cannibals, but have you ever heard of animals eating themselves? Sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? But it's the harsh truth. If the bites of many venomous snakes are deadly to others, how do they react to themselves? And anyways, why bite themselves and even eat themselves? These are some weird methods. Nevertheless, the phenomenon of eating own flesh even has an official name – autophagy. In addition to snakes, this phenomenon is subjected to some protozoan microorganisms – ascidians. In snakes, autophagy most occurs unconsciously and unintentionally. Why is this happening? The main explanation for self-eating of these reptiles is their complete reliance on their sense of smell for food choice. Individuals are very let down by their sense of smell, on which they rely so blindly. They lose control over themselves when they sense the scent of food. Well, that's not much of a surprise, because we too can lose our heads at the sight of food. If a mouse or rat, for example, ran along the tail end and their scent was left on the reptile scales, the snake goes into a state of intense excitement and takes itself for food, the understanding of the fact that it's already completely lost. In such situations, the reptile's own tail is its prey. Due to its relatively small brain, the individual cannot foresee the consequences of such an event. Therefore, eating its own tail is an unintentional action. There are two possible ways an individual either gives up and spits out its tail, or continues to devour its body until it's completely asphyxiated. Sometimes self-eating is a manifestation of some brain pathology. The animal may have disadaptation and discoordination in space. It sees the real prey, pounces on it but misses a little and hurts itself. And what about venom? Will the snake be hurt by it? No, it won't. Snakes are immune. It's more likely that a snake will be hurt by an injury or bleeding. Such self-immunity, by the way, applies to all snakes of the same species or even genus. For example, a viper will not die from the venom of another viper, but if it's bitten by another snake, say a black mamba, then the bite will be lethal. Here's a vivid example of self-eating. The snake clings tightly to itself. Then you can see how the man pours some liquid on its hand and runs its hand over the reptile's head and jaw, after which it abruptly releases its tail. The duration of this clip is exactly five minutes, four of which the snake is in this position. Well, it's good that at least it's come to its senses. It turns out that even our ancestors noticed the propensities of snakes to eat themselves. Egyptian archaeologists have found an ancient drawing of a snake or a dragon coiled up in a ring and holding its own tail in its mouth. The creature depicted in this picture is called Ouroboros and is on par with the most ancient symbols of mankind. The symbol of Ouroboros can be interpreted in different ways. The most common version is a representation of eternity and infinity. In more recent times, the Swiss psychoanalyst Carl Jung put a new meaning into the symbol of the Ouroboros. Thus, the orthodox analytical psychology, the Ouroboros archetype, symbolizes darkness and self-destruction simultaneously with fertility and creativity. Rivals of Snakes Now, let's talk a little bit about the life of these reptiles. All snakes, without exception, lead a predatory lifestyle. Apparently, there are no vegetarians among them at all. I've already mentioned that snakes mainly feed off small animals and swiftly attack their prey, but is there any animal that can attack the snake itself? This undersized beast, you might say, is obsessed with snakes, even venomous ones. Yeah, it's a hedgehog. Hedgehogs can eat venomous snakes without any consequences. Yes, it's quite a peaceful animal that eats caterpillars, worms, or frogs, but it can also fight back against such predators. More often than not, hedgehogs have fights with vipers. In any case, when encountering a snake, hedgehogs will not pass up, but on the contrary will demonstrate their strengths. First, an excellent armor in the form of thorns on the back, and second, if we take the specific case of vipers, these prickly creatures are not afraid of these venomous reptiles at all. Hedgehogs have a resistance to snake venom, and they're protected from its effects by the protein called arinacin. In addition to hedgehogs, there are other contenders for the title of animals that are not afraid of snakes. For example, the honey badger, also known as a ratel, 
In addition to honey, from which the name comes, their diet may include snakes. I'll even say more, snakes make up more than half the honey badger's diet. Immunity to venoms is paramount to its survival. They hunt all kinds of snakes, including the most venomous, and can even be bitten, that is, envenomed in the process. Although snakes with strong venom can bite a honey badger more than once, the honey badger is able to kill the reptiles with ease and stay alive. The venom does it almost no harm. Let's take a look at one such confrontation. Python versus Honey Badger Safari participants in Botswana's Chobe National Park filmed a python attacking a honey badger, but ultimately falling prey to it. The snake tried to strangle the struggling animal. Not only did the python strangle its victim, but it also bit it. But honey badgers have thick enough skin so the animal survived. Eventually, fortunately for the latter, the snake was interrupted by a jackal running by. Driving it away, the snake loosened its grip, which the honey badger immediately took advantage of. Instead of running away and leaving its prey to the jackals, the honey badger began to chase them away, and at one point the animals began to pull the python like a rope. The second jackal bit the honey badger, but eventually the predator won. It grabbed the python by the tail and dragged it into the bushes. Anaconda versus Cayman Several years ago, Kevin Dooley, a 58-year-old animal photographer, captured a fight between a giant anaconda and a caiman in the Brazilian jungle. The man, who was near Pantanal, went on hunting with a camera in the jungle. Moving along the river in a boat, the man was photographing the picturesque surroundings when a splash of water caught his attention. When he turned around, he saw a snake strangling a caiman, one of South Africa's most dangerous crocodiles. Before Dooley's eyes, the anaconda wrapped its deadly grip around the reptile, squeezing its entire body. The caiman managed to twist and grip the anaconda's neck with its teeth, but it twisted and swam away, leaving its adversary at the sight of the fright. Since the photographer didn't observe the fight from the beginning, he doesn't know who the instigator was, but the snake undoubtedly did better. In Dooley's opinion, at some point the snake might not have had enough oxygen and let go of the caiman, only then could it bite it. But the snake slipped away, leaving it with injuries. However, this outcome is not particularly surprising. Anacondas can exceed 16 feet in length and are famous for their incredible strength. While caimans, although considered dangerous predators, grow to about 10 feet. The size is clearly on the side of the anaconda. Python versus Crocodile An olive python and a young saltwater crocodile met in Queensland, Australia. The two reptiles had a dispute over a swamp near the city of Mount Isa, and it took them some time to decide which one of them was more suitable for lunch. The python and the crocodile ended up caught on camera by local kayaker Martin Muller, who only caught the final part of the scene. He noticed the reptile swallowing the motionless crocodile and decided to take some shots. The unique footage shows the snake gradually swallowing the reptile. What's so unique about it? The fact is that Although in this case the python eats the crocodile, such a heavy dinner can turn out badly. Snakes are very voracious, which is why there have been many cases when such meals ended badly. For example, one Myanmar python decided to eat a reptile in the same way, and either it didn't calculate its strength or it was too carried away by the eating process, but in the end it simply burst. The ability to swallow the victim whole is a distinctive feature of all snakes, but the olive python has this mechanism honed to perfection. The structure of its jaws allows it to open its mouth as wide as possible. Swallowing is followed by a long period of digestion, which can last for several weeks or even a month. At the same time, the olive python digests both coarse scales and crocodile teeth, despite the presence of keratin and enamel in them. Another python versus crocodile Another similar encounter between a python and a crocodile took place at Lake Mundara in Australia and also resulted in the victory of the snake, which, after strangling its prey, dragged it to land and swallowed it whole in 15 minutes. This fight and the lunch that followed were observed by Queensland resident Tiffany Corliss. According to Corliss, the crocodile had no chance to free itself, despite the fact that it was twice the size of the snake. According to the girl, at first the crocodile resisted, trying to stick its head out of the water, but the python was stronger and the crocodile gave up. After its victory, the python dragged its prey to the shore and proceeded to eat. After the python finally swallowed its prey, it crawled back to rest with the outline of the crocodile it had swallowed clearly visible outside. 
It's worth noting that the python is one of the most economical predators in the animal world. Its digestive tract is built in such a way that it digests large food for about several months. If the food was not very large, it would take several weeks to digest it. Therefore, if the python only eats big food, it only needs to feed 10 to 12 times a year and it will get all the nutrients it needs. Python versus Deer The jungles and deserts are home to many predators which struggle to survive and often need to hunt non-trivial opponents for their sustenance. This, for example, happened in India. A camera that was set up near a body of water in the state of Maharashtra captured the attack of a huge python on a deer. The snake ambushed the deer by hiding under the water. The deer that had come to the waterhole didn't notice the reptile. When one of them got a little closer to the water, the python was brought to light. In this footage, the huge snake can be seen jumping out of the water and swooping down on one of the four deer that were standing on the shore. The snake first sank its teeth into the animal's head, then wrapped itself around it and began to strangle it, and after a while it swallowed it whole. According to an Indian Forest Service official, pythons often use this method. When hunting their prey, they attack and grip the victim with their teeth in just a few moments. Python versus Leopard Tourists in Kenya's Masai Mara Game Reserve witnessed a fight between a leopard and a python. Safari participants noticed the big cat attacking the Central African rock python crawling in the grass. The python fought back with all its might. Once it managed to wrap its rings tightly around the leopard, and victory could have been on its side, but the leopard demonstrated fantastic agility and managed to escape from the embrace. The predator continued to bite and scratch the snake until it got its way. As a result, the python received many wounds, especially in the head area. The leopard was also injured. The most obvious wound was on its right front paw. Central African rock pythons are among the four largest snakes in the world. They grow up to 19.6 feet in length and weigh up to 220 pounds. Central African rock pythons are known to eat warthogs, antelopes that weigh up to 128 pounds, young Nile crocodiles up to 5 feet long, and even leopards. However, as you can see, in this case, luck was on the side of the spotted big cat. Snake versus Snake According to experts who study the behavior of snakes, fights between different species don't usually occur. In the animal world, battles for territory or simply biting and demonstrating one's own strength are considered normal, but this is something new in the reptile behavior. The main task in a battle between two snakes is to follow the opponent on its back, but snakes, such as the king cobra for example, continue to fight even when they're on their backs. We will stand and fight and die. Usually, the fight between snakes is like a dance. A set of different movements would be the envy of any choreographer. The bodies of snakes are very flexible and can take different forms. In this footage, you can see how the snakes have been looking at each other for a very long time and have not started the fight. For the first few minutes, the reptiles study each other and try to figure out what the opponent will do. One researcher of snake behavior and a biologist was surprised by this battle because snakes of different species usually don't compete with each other as mating with females of another species is impossible. The battle between the males was really dramatic. From the beginning, the advantage was on the side of the black snake, which actively bit its opponent. Thanks to slow motion, you can see the details of the fight and understand why the black snake was stronger. The author also decided to capture the outcome of the battle in this video. Python vs Dog Residents of Thailand rescued a dog that was being strangled by a huge python. In the video, filmed by eyewitnesses, you can see how the snake is curled around the dog and the dog only wags its tail, not understanding what's happening. Fortunately, men came to the rescue and did everything they could to save the animal. At some point, the dog stopped struggling and looked as if it would no longer be able to breathe, but the rescuers didn't give up and kept beating the snake with sticks. Eventually, the reptile let go of its victim, and to the surprise of the audience, the dog came back to life and ran away from its offender as if nothing had happened. Snakes don't just attack crocodiles, dogs, and antelopes. You don't have to go to South America to encounter the hissing monster. Sometimes snakes come to people's homes on their own and even ring the doorbell. An attack on a human, a snake rodeo in Texas, and a bunch of 250,000 snakes are further in this episode. Anacondas The next incident occurred when a group of scientists was attacked by a huge snake while trying to catch an anaconda in the jungle of Venezuela. 
The specialists underestimated the capabilities and size of the reptile, trying to pull it out of the river where it was quietly going about its usual business. The snake did not attack them while they were in the boat, but when the three scientists entered the water and grabbed it, it was forced to defend itself. The anaconda was big enough that if it had wanted to, it could have easily killed one of the scientists, but they were faster and grabbed the wriggling snake. That didn't stop the anaconda from biting one of the scientists on the arm. For him, it could have meant the loss of several fingers or even an entire hand. An anaconda bite is not venomous, but given how sharp and strong its teeth are, it can still be fatal. In this particular case, the anaconda managed to properly get its fang into the scientist's finger, and that was only the beginning of his suffering. And then he had to get his hand out of the snake's mouth, which sounds a lot easier than it actually was. When the scientist tried to get his hand out, he only made it worse and the pain intensified. And then he had to stick his hand deeper into the snake's mouth to unhook himself from the curved fang. Thanks to luck, he was able to do so and the injury was not fatal. Here, a camera mounted at the entrance caught the moment a snake bit a man in the head. Notice the man calmly opens the door in his house and a snake appears from somewhere above and immediately aims at his head in the eye area. It all happens so fast that it's impossible to realize what's happening at once. The man starts screaming loudly and runs into the house. It's like a whole new level of home security. One day, Texas resident Belinda Munez had a visitor she didn't expect to see on her doorstep. And no, unfortunately, it wasn't Santa Claus or the men in black. It was a snake. The evidence of what happened is a recording from a street video camera. It turned out that a snake, which managed to climb the wall, rang the doorbell. The footage shows the reptile crawling up to the bell and pressing it with its head. It's a good time to ask, how do you feel about snakes? Have you fallen in love with them yet while watching this video? Well, if these cold-blooded creatures are not among your favorites after all, then stay away from this place. And if you're not indifferent to them, know that in the Canadian province of Manitoba, near the village of Narcisse, there's an infestation of garter snakes every spring. The prairies of Manitoba become a real sea of nightmarish, wriggling snakes at this time. In winter, the snakes hibernate in underground caves formed by water leaching into the limestone rocks. But soon after the snow melts, in late April or early May, tens of thousands of garter snakes emerge from the caves and begin wriggling to the surface, performing their mating rituals in large, tangled balls. Once, a zoology professor at Oregon State University estimated that there were about 35,000 snakes in one hole. There could be over 250,000 snakes in the whole area. If what happens every spring in Canada is natural, the annual event taking place in the United States is not. It's the so-called snake rodeo, a popular entertainment and sport in the southern United States, mostly in Texas. It all starts with a general hunt for wild rattlesnakes. Thousands of captured individuals are taken to the rodeo venue and stacked in special enclosures. Many of the snakes that end up below soon die under the weight of their congeners. The survivors are used in various games. At the end of the rodeo, the remaining snakes are exposed, cooked, or even simply slaughtered. It's an event where you can also buy snake skin and even buy a rattlesnake you like as a gift. Curiously enough, the event attacks tens of thousands of visitors each year. That's it for today. What from this episode impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments. And if it was interesting for you, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.